Welcome to Fresh Movie Recaps. Today we are going to recap a 2018 British movie called Farming, based on a true childhood story. The movie follows Eniton, a black British teenager who grows up to hate his own identity and hate other black people. Caught between two worlds and belonging to neither, Eniton's need for love and acceptance is exploited by the adults in his life, transforming a sweet boy into a teenage menace. Suffering constant low-level insults at home, with Ingrid his foster mother repeatedly threatening to send him back to Wooga Wooga land if he misbehaves, and the object of ceaseless bullying at school, Eniton learns to hate his blackness and later becomes part of a white skinhead gang led by a white supremacist and later its leader. The story of sheds light on the practice of Nigerian parents giving their children to a white working-class family in hopes of securing a better future around the 1980s London in a practice that came to be known as farming. The movie begins with the boy with his The White Skin Gang chasing one black fellow who pleads to him calling him brother, but he proceeds to punch him in the face. We are taken back when his parents were looking for a house to place their boy who was only six weeks after placing an advert in the newspaper. We come to understand that the parents were students too. Eight years later, he has grown isolating himself from the family, which at times has as many as ten black children in her erratic care, only playing by himself to his imaginary friends behind the couch, never seeing his parents who had made it as lawyers. His foster mother takes him out to shopping and she's seen manipulating him into stealing a necklace for her, but he is caught and she starts chastising him in front of the shopkeeper, but later we see he had taken the necklace and gave it to his mom only to find out it was given to one of his little sister who was the favorite to the foster parents. He runs to the street and he is attacked by some young boys who set a dog after him which saw him getting 15 stitches for OM the hospital. When the father gets him after being told about the whole ordeal tells the boy to go back to the street to defend himself. Tells him to pick up a brick and hit them not to return home until he has done it. Eniton and his siblings are taken to Nigeria by their biological parents who had already established themselves as lawyers by now. His return to his culture proves disastrous as it seems very alien to him. He and I doesn't say a word for six months and they decide to perform a spiritual ritual on him. While in school, he refuses to speak his name, which ends up in a fight with the teacher hence being expelled from the school. A fight ensues between the parents in which it is decided for him to be taken back to England after expelling him from three schools for beating up teachers. In return to his former foster family after being examined, Eniton realizes that his being black is the problem, so he decides to take matters in his own hands. Running to the bathroom, picks up a brush to scrub off the dark skin color raw and cover it in talcum powder. Eight years later, he has grown up by now, and the movie takes us to his first day of the term of his secondary school year. Eniton, the only black boy in the classroom, insults a black female teacher, Ms. Depo, by asking what she is looking at. The entire classroom turns against him and a fight breaks out. He is suspended from the school. In his way out, he meets the Tilbury Skins white skinhead gang who seem not to fear the police. He returns to the school compound and meets the teacher he insulted earlier and she tries to help him. Seated in the yard, he is met and beaten up by the Tilbury Skins gang who beat him up severely and drag him across the field. Eniton is stripped naked, placed against a wall he is sprayed by the gang leader called Levi with white painting with words, Keep Britain White. Some time passes and he meets the gang again, first as they were passing Eniton hides, but later he overcomes his fears and confronts the group calling them out. He pulls out a hammer, Levi comes after him with brass knuckles, Ms. Depo tries to intervene when he is knocked down. Levi adopts him into the gang as a kind of perverse mascot, firstly dehumanizing him with mental and physical torture, then forcing him to join vicious attacks against black victims. In the most literal example of the if you can't beat them, join them mentality, he goes from Levi's victim to his barely tolerated pet in the profoundly misbegotten belief that if he can outmatch them in the viciousness of his racial hatred, he will have found a tribe to which he can belong. They are chased by another rival group called Grayskins till they end up in their station which was a car junkyard. Eniton is forced to get it on with the pig instead he slits its throat and he is initiated into the gang by its leader. 
The group later on attacks the Ms. Depot and the gang assaults her in Ian I's presence and he does nothing about. She pleads to him as he looks on. Ian I's mom on a walk finds the Tilbury gang in gang fight with a group of black sailors who they later on rob of all their belongings showing his hate for his own kind had grown. Confronted by his mom in his room E and I who was already 16 by now about not attending school even though his school suspension had ended a month ago and about involving in fights with the gang Eniton tells her he is the law. Later we see the gray skin stockpiling weapons to attack the white skins who were in the bar unaware at the moment. While Eniton heads to the washrooms he is followed by Levi's girlfriend who wants to have a taste of him, he runs away on all to find that the gray skins had arrived in the bar and a great fight had broken up already. They are all arrested but only the Tilbury Gand is bailed out. Later on he is bailed by his mother. Hitting rock bottom he picks the teacher's number. They pick him from his home as they prepare for another battle with the Grayskins in the field. Instead of a group battle, the Grayskins ask for only one person in the whole gang. You guessed right. Eniton. Other group members protest Levi's decision to give up one of their own. He is badly beaten up while his own group leaves him behind. He later finds them at the bar and asks why they left him behind, to which Levi answers that he wouldn't let him lead his group. He confronts Levi heads on in a one-on-one -on -one battle, with one strike to the head Levi ends in the ground and he drives a blade through him hence becoming the gang leader. In returning home he is arrested after his mother calling the police on him as the only way she saw fit to save him away from the gang. After several days in the cell his parents came coming from Nigeria and he is released from the cell but he insults them and beating up his own father and mother runs away from the police to the car junkyard. Other white gang members want E and I did, only to be saved after they found him hanging and unconscious. This marked the turn in his life as we are taken in the movie six months later to see E and I released from a juvenile detention after his Nigerian parents paid a stipendry for his education at the Brighty Institute with his prerequisite of him studying law to which he is given an orientation by his secondary school teacher who received a call from his foster mother. She promises to place his trust in her AAS she is willing to guide him through the journey, but Eniton breaks down due to what he let her go through and his experience with the Tilbury gang. Eniton's life takes a positive turn when he finds hope and support from a social worker, fellow student, and teacher, leading him to be admitted to a boarding school in Surrey. Despite facing challenges, he achieves a C grade in his exams, which boosts his self-belief. From being a troubled youth, he transforms into a successful individual, earning a master's degree in law, and later ventures into acting and directing. Adewale Akinidi Agbaje, the real person behind Eniton's story, becomes an actor and director, featuring in various movies and series. While he reconnects with his biological family, forgiveness was not easy. The film about his life sparks a revelation from his foster parents, urging him to share the truth. Adewale acknowledges that the movie may not have brought significant change, as similar issues persist in other countries like the U.S. and France. He advocates for a change in government attitude and its spread among the people to address these challenges.